quick little note before we start the video. Uh, below is Caveman Man Cave. Uh, John, uh, check his check his YouTube channel out. He just picked up a Surface Grinder and uh, his channel's trying to grow, so help the guy out. Caveman's Man Cave. All right, guys, thanks. Hello, everybody. Thanks for stopping by the shop. Uh, I'm going to start off, uh, well, let's start off with this video is uh, modifications and mistake. And uh, I'll go through that with you. But uh, just wanted to talk about something for a second. Uh, I'm here in front of the closing lathe, and uh, I, I'm doing this. Uh, a friend passed away. Uh, I bought this lathe from him. Uh, his name was Don Miller. People here in uh, some of the Northern California people might know Don. <clears throat> he was a, uh, he repaired uh, bridge ports, uh, and he did uh, ten double E's also. But primarily his business was uh, rebuilding bridge ports. Did a really nice job on him. Heck of a guy. Uh, I bought the closing from him, and uh, he was always there to help me if I had questions. Uh, I called him one night. He was uh, at home watching TV and helped me with my uh, uh, Supermax mill, uh, working out a problem. The, the thing I loved about Don it was uh, he was a gruff, uh, like a, a sailor out of World War II or something. Just every other word was a cuss word. Always had a cigarette hanging out, and uh, but a heart of gold. Um, I had a laugh. I bought... Uh, uh, a grinding hub from him one day. He owed me five bucks, and we were over at the, his ten double E, and he was machining. And I said, "Hey, just give me this tooling bit here that you've made." And he, he uh, a few expletives and told me to get the hell out, and uh, stopped the lathe, and said, "Come on!" And walked into his office, spent fifteen minutes going through a tooling catalog, trying to find what he wanted to show me. Showed me. And then discussed how to make the tool and then took me out in his shop and showed me the tool that he used uh, to do it. And that was the type of guy. He, he would take that kind of time. Anyway, Don, uh, miss you. Uh, I used to call him every now and then just to check in on him. Haven't seen him in a bit. But Don, uh, sorry you're uh, out of this world. Um, maybe it's a good thing. He, was, he did have cancer uh, of some sort and was uh, suffering quite a bit. Um, anyway. Mistakes and modifications. Uh, let's uh, move over and uh, we'll start on that. Oh, yep, camera's crooked and everything there. But oh, before we move on, you saw this in my hand here. Well, I'm a slacker. I did not attend the bash. Uh, hopefully Stan's not uh, so angry with me. Um, but I did win this in the raffle. Uh, it's a Noga uh, flip tool. It's kind of cool. It locks in place. Pull it back down so there's different uh, deburring items in this tool and uh, I also received a really nice swag package uh, from uh, Stan. A lot of neat items. Uh, one of the coolest things when I think about it is, is this guy right here and if you guys can put your hand on one of these the Black Book Hot Sheet E30 e uh, goes all the way up to four inches in dimensions with all the taps and Really a nice quick reference. I was really, really surprised at this and uh, really a nice little add-on. All right, let's move on. Well, mistakes and, or modifications and mistakes. Pardon my dirty workbench here. This, uh, this is called a trailer valet. And it's uh, a device for moving trailers. And you can put a hand crank on it. Whoop! Well, you can put the handle on there. Put a hand crank on it, and with the it, so right there, you notice it won't move. And if you release the brake, then it'll move. Right? You can crank and move. And it's got a high high speed and a low speed. And they also made a tool to go on a drill driver and drive it with a drill driver. So, modifications and mistakes. This, uh, let's uh, flip to a pitcher. That's the uh, front of my boat trailer and you can see it has a surge brake on it. 
Well, with the problem with the surge brake is that as this moves, the surge brake moves, and now you're not uh, having good weight on the cup on the ball. Uh, the I've watched a lot of videos of uh, fellows that have have these and use them, and there's a lot of videos where they don't have a surge brake. They go to use the machine, and it actually bends the cup. Uh, it ruins the cup on their trailer. I didn't want to have to deal with that at all. Um, so I decided more research and I found this. So here's a, we're going to flip to a photograph. And you can see there they have a, uh, an adapter where you can bolt to the frame. So I decided to go ahead that adapter is 130 bucks. I said, well, heck, I can make it. It'd be a nice project. So, um, this uh, pretty nice unit. The, the trailer ball screws into the unit, and you have to use their trailer ball. It's a fine thread trailer ball. Um, and this piece threads up and down for your height adjustment in locking the ball. And it's it's a nice nice piece there. Uh, they have a spanner wrench that you can use to tighten it. Anyway, so I said uh, I'm going to make what they have. And there's the, the unit that sits in the um, trailer valet. So I said, I'm going to make a unit here. So I'm going to show you some different uh, pictures uh, possibly here. But so I made, I made this guy here. And I made it out of gas pipe. And I was kind of, kind of proud of it. I needed, I needed to make that bottom piece right there. And this was the wrong diameter. So I, I built it up with weld and then machined it. And you'll see some pictures here. And uh, I was pretty happy with it. Then I uh, made a plate that would go on the trailer, and I made two plates. I made this one, which was a fixed plate, and then I made one that's an adjustable. Well, the fixed plate, I had bolted it, and the weight of the trailer actually unspun it. So I ended up putting the adjustable plate on the boat trailer. And that worked. But there's here comes my mistake. I ended up I I, I wanted <laughs> this was this is this is really dope stupid. There's the pin that goes through this bottom piece right here. Right? Right, that locks in there. I said, oh, that's nice. I says, hey, I've got one that'll fit right here. That'll be great. I have one in the drawer. So I pull it out. I'm all happy. It fits. It's a nice size and everything. Well, had it all hooked up, started moving the boat with this machine, and a little bit of a grade, not much, and... I stopped, used the brake and stopped it, and it sheared the pin. Hmm. Hi, Charlie. Hey, remember that guy, Charlie? Guy always makes mistakes around here. Well, Charlie didn't pay attention. That's aluminum. Sheared that puppy right off. Luckily, the actual trailer jack wheel was only that far off the ground. Nobody got hurt, no damage, no nothing. Very, very fortunate. 
So from that point, I said, okay, well, I'm not gonna deal with that. So I went and bought, went to the hardware store, bought a grade eight bolt and drilled this guy out to take the grade eight, eight bolt and secure the other one from spinning. Well, not a mistake. Well, I guess a mistake. Let me pull that. You'll see some pictures of this too. But the boat and trailer weighs 5,000 pounds. And just trying it, the, the angle of attack that this was doing, uh, the way it was working, you can see it just wallowed out this gas pipe that I used. Wall thickness was not substantial by any means. So you can see the difference in wall thicknesses there. So, no good. You gotta remake it. Or I can spend 130 bucks. But I don't think, I don't like the way that thing bolts on the way they have it. So, I uh, had a piece of uh, two and a quarter inch stock and I machined a new one. So there's the bottoms, and this guy will sit in there like here. and I have to weld it, and then the, the plate will go into there. So I call this uh, lip, liptonization. <laughs> Old Tom Lipton, anything built too strong will never break. Well, I think uh, now I got enough wall thickness here compared to that guy uh, that I shouldn't have a problem with this. I still need to uh, weld it and uh, finish it and hopefully you're going to try it this week so this is kind of a part one we won't have a, a finish i'll have to film the, using the unit up there and see how it works uh the only other thing i thought i'd share with you is how i how i cut the uh, bird's mouth on the uh, pipe here um hang on i'll be right back Some time ago, I did a video on these uh, cutters that I got from Banggood to uh, basically as a sponsorship item and to demonstrate. And this is what I ended up using. And so basically, let me take the spring out of there. Really worked nice. Drilled, it drills a pilot hole and it holds the cutter right in place. So basically it was just like that. Whoop, come on. Got the drill bit stuck. Basically just came down just like that in the end of the pipe and cut all the way to the end. Flipped it 180 degrees, did the same thing, and then just came in with the bandsaw to uh to cut this part off. Which ends up with the part like that. Need to bevel all this prior to welding it, but it uh, really worked out good. I did it on uh, both 
did it on this small piece first and then redid it on the thicker part and it worked fantastic. So uh, let's see if I can get it welded up and maybe I'll show you if my welds look better than this than this guy. <laughs> uh, but uh, let's uh, let's cut and we'll we'll bring you back here shortly. So I'm going to use the uh, belt grinder to get a uh, weld prep on here. Let's give it a shot. Small wheel adapter works real well. Get in there and get that. Okay. Well, I need to I need to finish by drilling holes for this guy to have the pin go through, a steel pin, actually the bolt. Um but I really want everything square in 90 degrees. So you can see the Wixie in the back there. Um, had it here, had it on the bench, zeroed it, zero, and uh, I'm in pretty good shape right there. But the welding uh, magnet here doesn't allow me to get in here and start scribing. And I really, this, this guy I drilled it after I welded it. And because I had the flexibility I thought I had. <laughs> uh, I don't want to do that again. Uh, I really want to pre-drill this and I can measure, pick up this hole and make it, make it bigger. Uh, and have it nice and 90 degrees. And then this plate has already been on the uh, trailer. And then I took it off and put the adjustable plate on. So this hole pattern is already on the trailer. So... Uh, been sitting here debating what to do, and I think what I'm going to do is give it a couple of tacks so I can take the magnet out, and then I can uh, scribe some lines and get uh, get it that way, get it perfect, cut it, and uh, cut it back off, and then go and drill, and then go ahead and weld it up. That's the plan, I think, so we'll see. I got a plan B. This uh, this hasn't been welded onto this plate yet, so I can uh, unbolt it and I can locate, I can rotate and get this guy square after the holes are drilled. But I can use this. I can make sure that the hole is square to the edge of the plate. Tighten it with the bolt, which I think I've done. I have to double check it. I know the distance, I can check the distance here, and then I can uh, space this guy and line it up and drill through both of them at the same time. So it doesn't have to be in this fixture, it doesn't have to be, it can be just in the mill. And then I can always adjust this plate to get the final clocking if I need it. I think that's the plan. I got to study it some more. Only want to do it one time.
So here's my setup. I using some fireball uh, magnet blocks to space my sleeve off the stub a quarter inch. That way I'm not sitting down on the weld. Um, and I've got a two inch fireball magnetic block underneath it. And then I basically raised the sleeve here up till I had zero zero on the angle cube which matches the vise and then clamped it down. So I think I'm set up. I've got a uh, center line and I've got a, a distance line to go ahead and drill the hole. So we'll see if uh, see if this uh, mad setup works. Should be good. Main thing is I didn't want this guy to be spinning as, as I was drilling. Drill bit. Like I hit my hole. Going through nice and easy, cleaning it up. Well, I have enough depth. And probably not. Okay, longer drill bit to finish out the hole.
success. Well, that worked out good. So the plate, which will bolt on for tightening, I can clock it, get it parallel and perpendicular, and then go ahead and weld it. Weld it here. I've got a weld prep there. So ready to go ahead and uh, weld this back together, weld the two together. And uh, oh, the other hole I got to drill is this guy down here. I forgot about that one. I got to drill a cross hole down here. That's relatively simple to do, though. Simple to mark, and it really doesn't matter where it is. Uh, this could be anywhere. It doesn't. It doesn't really matter. Well, let's see how my welding skills are doing today. <laughs> I lost the uh, volume on this uh, track, so I'm pointing out the red mark that I had uh, found center. You, you know, just scribed it when it was in the uh, device. And you can see in the mill there, I have my um, laser centering device. And you can see it shooting there down on the part. And uh, I got a nice uh, circle around the part and uh, ready to drill it. So simple way of finding it and uh, having some fun with the tool that I own. Well, I just got done welding the plate on. It's hot. Charlie don't wait for anything. <laughs> but uh, the weld here turned out pretty good. Uh, not bad for for a uh, blind, shaky, deaf welder, as old Bruce Witten says. Um, probably could have used a little more fill rod. It's a little undercut, but um, I didn't want it looking like bird shit. This inner one was, uh, was tough to weld. It's so small. Um, of course, the piece wasn't in here when I welded it. But uh, got it all done and uh, good to go. So... Uh, all I'm going to do is uh, finish cleaning it, I throw maybe, I think I might put some black crinkle paint on it and uh, so it matches. And hopefully uh, later this week, or into next week I should say, this is a Saturday, or Friday, well, it's Saturday, um, I'll get up to the lake and see if, uh, if it works. I'll try to get some video when I do that. Thanks for uh, stopping by the channel, appreciate it. I uh, hope you enjoyed the uh, video. It was uh, fun. A fun little build, challenging, and uh, learned some lessons. Uh, and uh, Charlie, uh, we're going to keep him out of the shop as much as we can. I think he's a cousin of Bozo. All right. Thanks again. Take care. Be safe out there in today's world, huh?